I always thought that since pro is the opposite of con, like how progress is the opposite of congress and all that, that if profanity is all the words you're not supposed to say in polite conversation, then all the other words should be considered confamity. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome to me seeing how quickly I can get this video demonetized. Let's talk about profanity. So, uh, filtering for swear words is something that comes up uh, on occasion if you're making a multiplayer game and, like, players can send chat messages to each other and you don't want people calling each other racial slurs. So I don't know how many of you are actually making a game where that's a concern that you have to worry about, but I saw this come up last week and I couldn't not talk about it. Profanity filter GML is exactly what it sounds like. It is a, uh, a little game maker script which will search strings and it will, um, it will search for all the rude words and it will, like, filter them out. Replace them with asterisks and whatnot. I'll have a link to the GitHub repository down in the description of the video. Anyway, currently there are no releases listed in the releases section. I don't know if the guy just forgot to do that or if there's actually more that he wants to do. Last commit was a week ago and it looks pretty complete to me, but uh, you never know. So for the time being, if you want to play with this project, you can either um, open it with GitHub, you can clone it with Git, or you can just download the zip of the project itself and you can open it up. Uh, there is a minor problem, which is that... Um, uh, this project was made in was one of the recent betas, and for whatever reason, the last monthly version of Game Maker doesn't like importing. Like, the project tool for uh, downgrading a project from one of the betas isn't working for whatever reason. Actually, you know what? Um, I have an idea, and that's... Um, do I just need to update the Game Maker project tool? Because that's, uh, that's part of the package manager now. Hang on. Project tool Win64. It doesn't look like I actually did install it through the package manager, so that just might be why uh, Game Maker Yo-Yo Games has been messing around with the uh, like the install structure of the of the program recently. All right, let me actually try opening this up in a um, in the monthly now and see if I can do that without having it explode. Uh, that just means that we can do this the old-fashioned way and copy and paste code between projects. So I'm going to want. Uh, the string filter function. Uh, let's go create ourselves a script. String filter. And uh, I'm also going to want the uh, profanity filter function. And we can go and copy and paste that over. And that is going to give us uh, these uh, these two game maker scripts. The profanity filter function is a little bit longer because it does a, uh, a little bit more than just matching like bare strings. Let's see. I'm also going to want some included files so I can go and open the project in Explorer. Apparently, I can't go and open the project in Explorer. Game maker. I swear to God, recent versions of this engine have aged me prematurely about ten years. But um, I can go and open the project in Explorer. Let's go and open the data files folder and I'm just going to manually copy in uh, the, re the required included files and I'll talk about what these included files are for momentarily, but I'm gonna want profanity, profanity underscore extreme and the filter folder. Uh, let's go and just copy those into the game maker data files and we can be on our merry way. So uh, let me go and create a little, uh, I think I'm done with this uh, the GitHub project now. Let me go and create a little test object. Uh, I'm just gonna go and create myself an object. I'm just gonna go and throw uh, object one into room one. Uh, and we can uh, we can just do a little bit of, a, of testing in object one. I'm gonna go into the draw event for object one and I'm going to, um, let's draw text. Um, let's draw a little bit more in the middle of the room. 100, 100 coordinates and keyboard string and uh for those who don't know keyboard string is basically just like a log of the last keys that you've typed on the keyboard and it also respects the back the backspace key and that sort of thing hey. um i think it goes up to like a buffer of the last thousand uh letters that you typed or something like that and we can draw how about underneath that draw text 100 150 um profanity filter uh, keyboard string and that is going to allow me to start typing and the original text that I typed is going to appear on the first line the uh, filter for profanity text is going to appear on the second line and you can see that if nothing that I type contains swears I can just like it's going to be mirrored uh, but if I was to type something rude now this is where we get into the uh, to the demonetizing part of the video what's the 
What's a funny sounding swear word? I was always partial to ass myself. And that is going to um, repa replace the word ass on the second line with three asterisks. All right. So the next logical question for this, for anyone who spent more than about five minutes on the internet, is going to be like, how robust is this system? Uh, so if we were to, for example, type the word uh, everybody's favorite musical instrument, the the bassoon, if it's going to behave correctly, and we can see that we're not just doing a basic string search for like a list of all the words that are in the profanity file and like blanking them out if you find it, uh, which is good. I did notice when I was typing that that um, if the uh, it seems that if the ass is found at the end of a word, that sounds amazing. Um, it does blank it out for some reason, which doesn't look correct. I, um, I'm gonna guess that that's a bug. I tested a number of other words uh, earlier and it, it seemed to mostly behave correctly. Um, if I were to, uh, let's say, if you happen to be a person who's, uh, whose name was the name Cassandra. Uh, so if I type Cass, it blanks that out. But if I, if I type the rest of the name, it's fine. Um, I do think that that's a bug. Now, some of you which have uh, been around certain corners of the internet may be familiar with what is known as the Scunthorpe problem. If you know what that is, I'm sure you're laughing right now. If you don't know what that is, I'll leave it up to your imagination as to why it's called that. Uh, Tom Scott did a fun little video on it a few years ago, which I'll have linked down below. Uh, what else can we do to uh, assess the robustness of this system? And I think that would actually be a pretty uh, fun example, because what if we type the word assess. So the word assess works correctly. Uh, if you type the word asses, it also censors that because that is a separate word in the, um, in the profanity lift, in the profanity list. So I see that we don't have the same issue if the, uh, if the swear is found at the front of the word as we do if the swear is found at the end of the word. So you may remember that when I was setting this up, I added, uh, two files, uh, to the game maker included files. One was profanity and the other was profanity underscore extreme. Uh, there was also a dictionary file, which I don't believe is actually used in here and you probably don't really need. Uh, but uh, the difference between the two is that if you have a, uh, the words in the regular profanity file, it, there will only be censored if they stand on their own. Uh, like, for example, ass will not be blanked out if it's part of another word like this. Or um, perhaps part of the title of a particular uh, franchise of parkour games. Anyway, the list of words in the file profanity underscore extreme, uh, they will be blanked out even if they are part of another word. Anyway, that's where you start to run into the Scunthorpe problem a little bit more often. For example, if I were to type the word therapist, uh, the problem of the Scunthorpe problem becomes immediately apparent. We can see that the system is doing what it's designed to do, but unfortunately one of the words in the profanity underscore extreme file is actually found in other words. Uh, fun fact, this word was actually the subject of a lawsuit uh, a number of years ago because uh, someone wrote a newspaper article, a newspaper article, and the page formatting software that they were using uh, inserted a, a hyphenated line break in the middle of this word, and the guy that they were talking about actually uh, sued them for defamation, and I think he actually won. Anyway, the word therapist is a, uh, is a fun word from a computational uh, linguistics point of view. Uh, as a somewhat more innocuous word, and I have to assume that this is an error, um, the word balls can be found in the profanity extreme file. Uh, we all know what the word balls means in like the, like the locker room humor sense, but this, uh, the fact that this will be blanked out in any context is a bit of a problem if you're making, for example, a sports game. Um, if you're trying to, for example, reference more than one baseball, uh, or arguably even worse, uh, more than one football, because that just that just makes it look so much worse uh, when you have the word foot and then a bunch of asterisks, a bunch of asterisks after it. Um, I don't know where these like profanity databases came from. I think there's just like a like a general repository of rude words uh, that this was pulled from. But uh, this uh, this brings up that you may or may not want to like open these files up and edit them yourself. Uh, so if you go into the profanity file, these are both just text files. You can open them with Notepad or Notepad plus plus or whatever, and you can go and like add words, remove words, um, as you see fit. You can like move words from one list to the other if you think they're like they're still profanity but better or worse than the uh, the default setting. So that's that. Uh, I am not going to open up the profanity underscore extreme file because there are actually like some actual racial slurs and stuff that I don't really want on my screen when I'm recording it. 
But you get the idea. Um, and uh, remind me, what is the dictionary file? And the, the name that it's got the extension .dic is just incredible to me. But this is a... Uh, I'm pretty sure this isn't actually used. This is a, a base64 encoded something that, again, I'm pretty sure isn't actually used in here anywhere. Uh, yeah. That might have just been for testing. Anyway, that is Profanity Filter GML. Uh, this is not nearly as important a video as most of the ones that I make, but I saw this come up in the Discord last week, and I couldn't not make a video on it. So, uh, you're welcome, I guess. I'm gonna end this off here. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Feel free to discuss this extension and also the linguistic phenomenon that is profanity down in the comments. I like to post videos on the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker, so if anything like this or the comparatively more tame subject of 3D and Game Maker appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. You should all go check out Wizard X and the Lost Hat, which is one of the games that I like to work on when I'm not doing YouTube stuff. Link to the Steam page can be found down below. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I cannot wait to see how fast this video gets demonetized. Special thanks to DJ Gibbles, Edward Hulk, Game Maker, Ganymede Ghost, Manta Ray, Spy Die Games, Square Crow, Vitro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you feel inclined to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.